Welcome back to RimWorld. Now, by popular demand, I've bought back RimWorld. Obviously, this, this sort of third slot on the channel, besides the 2CK2 series, was meant to be for anything. But a lot of people have been asking me on Discord. A lot of people have been leaving the comments, when's RimWorld coming back? So, you know what? Here it is. And obviously, when you guys get bored of it, we can swap out for something else. But for now, it seems pretty, uh, pretty popular. And not only that, the game recently got full release as well, after being in early access for five years. So not doing it now, when it's at the almost, again, the, the sort of resurgence of its popularity, wouldn't be the best plan for business. So, I've got an idea. And it, it's sort of taken a couple of days here, which is why we've had a bit of a break for RimWorld to, um... All the, all the mods to catch up to the latest version of the game. They're, they're in a decent place right now. So we're going to be playing a Fallout-inspired scenario, as in the game Fallout, where the world is constantly a permanent effect of nuclear fallout. So it's going to be very difficult to go outside. We're going to have to manage our water and our food very, very carefully. We're going to have to, obviously, invest in methods of protecting ourselves against the radiation, so big blast doors, you know, lots of very heavily fortified walls, that type of thing. I've also included, uh, you know, mods to add power armor. So not, there is power armor in RimWorld, but specifically Fallout-themed power armor. Fallout themed factions, so we've got, um, as you can see here, Gamma, um, these are all sub mods, which I will link below. This one here is, uh, the Brotherhood, we've got Malpaeus there, which is, uh, Caesar's Legion, Scourge, Razor, uh, Razor? Wow, Raider Scum, fresh out of the pit, not sponsored. Um, so this should be pretty interesting, and those are gonna be factions that will turn up and will attack us, or help us, to, you know, maybe we could join in the, with the Legion, things like that. And we're also going to do it slightly different in that the last series we obviously played as, as the big four, as, as the Ever Queen and Elrang and Jerry King and Diz Waltney. What we're going to do instead is we're going to set those as people who are abandoned. So they will turn up naturally throughout the game. Maybe, you know, Caesar's Legion will be led by Elrang, or more likely, let's be honest, the Ever Queen. Maybe uh, Jerry King will be a raider. Something along those lines. And we'll meet them naturally through the series. That way, you know, we can uh, name a few characters after some that we missed last time. Alright, so everything is roughly set up here. We're going to be playing with the default uh, crash-landed classic RimWorld intro here, but with the permanent toxic fallout effect there. What are we going to plan? Uh, I'm not entirely sure. Why don't we play Randy on medium? So Randy's one of the harder ones because you can just get hit by all the difficult things to start off with. This is, uh, this is one of the difficulties where you have a lot more random nature, funnily enough, associated with uh, what's going to happen. This could be really, really difficult. Um, but I suppose we'll wait and see. Let's increase... What do you think? Should we lower the rainfall and increase the temperature to sort of reflect the, uh, toxic fallout, the sort of nuclear atmosphere? Um, seed import company. The seed doesn't matter, but we will go for, uh, this is gonna be the seed Elrang. Uh, we'll randomize the seed and generate the world. Only 30% because we're not probably gonna be doing much traveling across the world given that it's gonna be covered in nuclear fallout. Okay, game. Now, this is the other major aspect of things, is I have the Zombie Land mod turned on. Which means, to sort of represent the ghouls of the Fallout world, that we will get, although they are more traditional zombies, they they raise from the ground and eat corpses, or people. Um, so, these boys are going to rise up. We'll say that they appear five days from when we start. No, not 50, five days. There we go, from the start. We'll say we're not allowed any more than 750 zombies on the map. We'll put 1.2 colony modifier as well, so there will be... Um, that will scale, so you can make it very, very difficult, so lots of zombies appear quickly, um, or if you've got a smaller colony, you're only going to have, uh, sort of smaller ramp on the zombies, is how I understand that works. Zombies per colony is 20, so they're coming more than 720 on the map. I think that's fine. Why don't we set that to, like, 30? That's okay. Zombie speed is fine, uh, zombie strength is fine. Time, risk that a zombie bite is infectious. Now, ghoul in Fallout obviously don't infect another one, so I'm actually going to lower that down to, like, 5%. Yeah, I think that's fair. Now, we've also got to remember we're not going to be able to get new colonists very easily. So, this could be kind of lethal. This might be a very, very difficult... Um, this could be a very difficult playthrough. Play creepy ambient sound at night. Now, that's just a wolf going like... Uh, just howling. So, I'm going to turn that off just because it doesn't make any sense. Change to su survival mail to Twinkies? Uh, no. <laughs> I don't know why that would be. We'll turn off zombie blood as well because if we're having a lot more zombies on that, we don't want to slow the game down. Zombies will eat injured creatures and corpses... We'll turn off Suicide Bomber Zombies, but we'll turn up Toxic Splasher to represent the glowing ones from Fallout. And then we'll also turn off Operator Zombies there, actually. We'll turn that up to, like, 9% then to make up for those two being reduced. Um, so 10% of our zombies will set to being glowing ones. Zombie senses normal, but they can go into a rage if the group gets too large. Zombies recover from injuries. Yeah, I think ghouls do heal themselves, don't they, in Fallout? So that makes sense. Right, this is cool. Where do they want to come from? The map edge is not necessarily just from the soft ground, because ghouls don't rise out of the ground, so they'll just appear at the edges of the map there. Nice. Okay. Wow. What a mess. Okay, so what are these factions, then? These are, um, these must be, I assume, the Brotherhood of Steel? 
These boys must be raiders, and these boys must be Caesar's legion. I actually don't know. Well, it doesn't matter too much because we don't, we don't ideally want to go too close to them anyway. Where are we going to start? This is the most important bit. So we're looking for somewhere with water, but also in the mountains, so it's kind of easy to defend. So I'm immediately drawn to like this area here. Let's take a look at the terrain. Year-round growing, four thousand um, and forty-six millimeters of rainfall. That's a lot. Forageable food, not that we want it because it's going to be covered in nuclear fallout. Mountainous. It has a large river. Um, kind of low elevation, no caves as well, that's important, because on caves maps like this one here, insects can spawn and things along those lines, so actually these aren't bad. I might even be tempted to go for someone with a bit more rainfall. Um, I honestly quite like the look of this one in particular, just because there's two different types of stone as well, slate and marble. Marble is a very good stone to build things out of, because it's high value. So I think we're going to go for this one here. Now we are in a tropical rainforest, but because there's so much fallout, it might not matter too much. And what we'll do... Is if we go to prepare, prepare carefully, can we leave characters behind with prepare carefully? I think we can. Yeah, we absolutely can. Right, so what we'll do then, let's scrap these boys. And I'll go ahead and set up the uh, the big four. So Alrang, Everqueen, uh, Diswani, and the other ones to be left behind in the world somewhere. And then we'll start with characters that we didn't play as last time. So they are going to be out there somewhere in the world for us to find and meet. Again, I, I can't imagine that we're not going to see Everqueen leading Caesar's, Caesar's Legion or Jerry King building himself pyramids somewhere. So that's going to be pretty interesting if they become, you know, head of factions. They can also die out there, to my knowledge, as well. So we might want to keep an eye on that. Now we've got to make our own character. So who the hell did we have last time? We didn't have the classic uh, Grundle. We'll go with Grundle rather than Goldweird. Grundle Silver Piggy, who somehow managed to avoid uh, conscription into the Rimworld world. Um, Silver Piggy. Now, patrons, I have given me your names for the characters already. Obviously, we were going to do that last series, but it was cut short by the full release there. So, those will be added when we find ourselves some new colonists to go for. And we'll just start with the sort of uh, characters that we played as. So, what, who else have we had? We've obviously had Prince Rhino. How have I not had Prince... Oh, we'll call him Filka Rhino. Um, so, we'll go Prince... What's his name? Rhino, Rhino the Elephant. And then we'll make his title um, Filka. So, D, is it the Elephant going to fit? The Elephant... Nope. That's not even remotely close. Thank you. And you'll be uh, Filka. Is that how you spell Filka? I think it is. Right, we've got Grundle. We've got Rhino. We'll add... Um, who else have we had in series that I haven't ever bought in? Oh, we had um, No-Eyed Fred of uh, of House Whore. Yeah. Okay. Uh, No-Eyed Fred. Oh my god, you can't put space bars in the name. That's a little bit annoying. We'll call him Fred. Uh, his title can be No-Eyed. No... No eyed. And then he is of House Whore. Now, he didn't actually have no eyes. He was blind. Uh, but, you know, just for just for gameplay purposes. So, we'll start with these three. Just to make things a little harder on ourselves as well. Because why not? We've already got enough difficulty. I feel like I'm back into Remord at this point. So, a little bit of difficulty wouldn't hurt there. Um, Grundle Silver Piggy. Right, let's go ahead and customize these boys and make them as they were in-game. Alright, so our characters are done. Let's go over the, the list here. And uh, I'll show you what I've kind of come up with to represent them in-game. So obviously Grundle Silver Piggy was the last surviving dragon in the Mad World series. As a dragon, he has claws. Now it says bear claws because that's as close as I could damn get. Um, so that's probably the only thing that a regular Rimworld player wouldn't know what that is. As for everything else, it kind of makes sense. Uh, Soul Survivor, because he was the last surviving dragon. Then as an adulthood, he became a beast slayer. Um, specifically, slaying the Lycan Empire. Traits, Animal Friend, because he's a dragon. Fortune Finder, because he's a dragon. Body Purist, because obviously we had the, the purism mechanic in in uh, in Rimworld. In uh, TK2, Jesus Christ, how can I not remember that game of all things? In TK2, obviously we had the purity um, event chain, so I've added that one as well. Now, to represent him being a dragon... Uh, number one, he's good at shooting because he can shoot fire from his mouth because he's a dragon. Melee because obviously he's got big old claws, so you kind of imagine that a dragon would have a superiority there. Kind of shit at everything else that requires fine manipulation, like construction, mining, uh, crafting, artistic, medicine, all pretty bad at, and again, intellectual as well in terms of research because he's a giant dragon. I've also made him good at cooking with a passion for it because, brace yourselves, he's a dragon and can shoot fire. So he probably enjoys cooking things. I give him a little bit of extra um, plant skill there as well because of uh, herbalism. That's one of the three disciplines of magic you can learn in the Mythos mod pack. So, obviously herbalism is up there as well. And social because he is... Um, why social in particular? Why do I go with social? I'm not entirely sure. Um, mainly because I figured that a dragon would be interested in getting gold. So, somebody with a high social set. Plus, the actual character in-game did have a very, very high diplomacy. So, that sort of represents that. 
We have Filka Rhino the Elephant. 53 years old, just because I don't want him... Uh, he's obviously much, much older than that, but we can't make him immortal. Um, I could do this, actually, and do it the other way around. So we'll make him in his 40s, so he doesn't immediately drop down, but make his chronological age, like, 300. Because he was. Now, because he was an old man, he had uh, spiky white hair, which is what he's got. And, of course, you might remember, he was the first... Um, member of the wolf god and his, his descendants obviously became those full-blooded wolf gods so he's a wolf pack member uh for his childhood there and the shaman of shadows because he was a very very powerful wizard obviously he had the philosopher's stone and lots of different types of magic eventually intelligent enduring and night owl intelligent because he was an intelligent man with lots of learning because he was a wizard night owl because i kind of like the idea of him and he, we did this in game a lot in ck2 was he was awake very, very late, obviously working on his research project, so that makes sense for that one. And very enduring, because he was literally an immortal character, so that seems to make sense for me. As for his health, he has wolf muscle fibers, because he is part wolf, or he was werewolf in the game now. Actually, the original Rhino the Elephant wasn't, was he? But, just to represent his heritage there, or his descendants' heritage, I've given him wolf muscle fibers, just so we can actually show off this one a little bit too. Now, his skills... Very straightforward. Uh, melee, because he was raised in a time where sword fighting was... Uh, the dumb thing for Lords, so he's got melee stats. Pretty mediocre, actually, everything else there. Kind of a, a slightly higher animal stat to represent his sort of wolf heritage again, or his, his wolf relations. Medical, kind of high, because he was, again, a very, very learned character. And intellectual, very high again, because he is that type of boy. And capable of firefighting, that's a little bit annoying. What's causing that? Um, firefighting? Because he's a wolf pack member. Ah, oh, Okay. He learned to fight efficiently by tooth and claw, but he also learned brutally primal hunting strategies. Right, okay, so we can't fight fires. Could be an issue, um, but we've got Grundle, so Grundle hopefully knows a lot about fires. Then, of course, we've got no eyed Fred from the Game of Thrones uh, Golden Iron series there. He is um, a Gilded Reaver, so somebody who's interested in gold and only gold and any way of getting gold. Now, the only thing I could do with his health was just give him a single cataract. You can't give him both because obviously they'd be completely blind and useless. So the game mean makes it so you can only give them one. I feel like that's fair. You know, that, that seems like a pretty good compromise. Medieval Lordling and Pirate King. Both of those backstories make sense. And I'm trying to make it so the backstories make sense, even though the backstories can be a little bit shitty. Like this one, for example. It's actually reducing construction, mining, and plants and giving them social, which is not what we want at all. Um, but again, that, that's how I'm balancing this out a little bit. Pirate King disables doctoring, warning, operating, negotiating, and maintaining. So this guy's not going to be doing much shit at all there. A little bit unfortunate. However, he's very good at melee because he's a pirate. Very good at construction because he built a republic. You know, he was leading a republic there. And of course, mining as well because that's where gold comes from. The ground. Traits, fortune finder. Should be fairly straightforward, I would hope. Poor aim because he's blind. He's no-eyed Fred. And industrious because despite the fact that he was blind, he did actually restore his empire there. There's our preset. Let's go ahead and save that as preset Fallout. Then, of course, we've got uh, Jerry King, Diswalny, Evergreen, and Elrang there in the back burner somewhere out there in the world that we will come across at some point. As for equipment, I haven't done much. Just to represent that we're in a slightly more technologically advanced world, I've given us two robots, two of the very, very basic robots, a cleaning robot and a hauling robot, which... Don't do much, but I don't think they're affected by the radiation, so they're slightly better in that sense. And I'll just double check that saved. Let's do it. Are you sure you're finished? Yes, I am. Are we going to die instantly? Probably. This could be really, really bad. Now, what's the game strategy? Honestly, we've immediately got to sort out food. How the fuck are we going to do that? Oh, God, it's it's really green. Oh, it's like super green. Um, Can we fish? Because we are by a river. So if we could fish, that would work out pretty well. Now, this river seems like it's deep water, so I don't think the zombies will be able to get through that. That's pretty nice. Okay. Um, I guess we'll tunnel into this mountain here. There's a geothermal generator there as well, and some walls that we could sort of dismantle. We need to get into cover immediately because of the toxic fallout and seal up this mountain. So we're probably going to immediately start digging into there. Let's set this up before we unpause because I don't want us to immediately get, uh, get destroyed here. So we go manual priorities. Let's set firefight to maximum for those who can. Let's set patient, obviously, to maximum for those who can. You could be our doctor. So, Filco Runner is going to be the doctor. Maintain vats. So, vats are for cloning. Uh, organ vats as well there. So, we will clone these characters when we first can. So, that if they die, we've got a replacement ready to go. And apparently, that's very expensive. And I've never seen the mod before. So, it could be quite difficult. Bed rest to the highest. So, if they're injured, they rest. Hauling. Um... Hauling urgently. So, this is part of the allow tool mod, which allows you to designate items to be hauled um at, with a priority so obviously that because this is at the higher priority jobs list these will be done first honestly if we can do that I, i'd have to manually mark things to be hauled urgently so i probably want that higher basic like flicking switches and stuff so we might as well set that to be highest rearming traps probably not gonna be relevant in this are there even any animals on the map oh, there's no animals or trees holy shit wow 
Um, this could be weird. This could be very weird. I'm, again, I've never really played in this style before, so there's a lot of different things to take into account. Hunting, then, uh, going to be completely useless. Brewing uh, crops, so, um, you know, making alcohol, that type of thing, we're not really interested in. Grundle, if you can cook, you need to cook. If you can butcher, you need to butcher. No negotiation, that's irrelevant, seeing as, you know, there are no people and we're not the Borg. Train, um, again, irrelevant because there's no animals. Same with handling. Same with wardening. Same with refueling because there's no actual fuel on the map until we actually get chem fuel later on. Shit. Okay, this is going to be really odd. Fishing. That, I think, should be high priority. Because I think fishing might be the only way to get food. Now, the fishing submod basically... Um, makes it so you go to anybody of water and fish. Again, I'm not sure. Maybe if, because it's irradiated that we can't do that. Oh, shit. The water's all going to be irradiated. Which means that our hygiene mod, um, isn't necessarily going to work. Huh. Oh, shit. Okay. Um, this could be really, really difficult. Well, uh, repairing. Obviously, we'll set that to high priority so that they can keep things maintained. Deconstruct and construct. Now, ideally, you want to set mining above both of those. Otherwise, what they'll do is as we set them to mine out and say build something, they'll mine in one block, run back, get some resources, run back, build it, mine in the block, run back. And obviously, you want them to completely mine out what they're going to be building before they do that. So, we'll set that to uh, priority two for everybody, even if they're shit at it. We'll set that to priority three, but we've got to be careful we don't set anything else to priority three. That can go... Harvesting and growing isn't going to be relevant either until we get um, hydroponics. Damn, this is going to be very difficult. Shit. So, hydroponics need to go almost immediately onto our research tree then. Let me do that in advance before I forget. So, what do we want? We want batteries, we want hydroponics, we probably want solar panels as well. Um, seeing as, normally the downside of solar panels is they're quite vulnerable. They don't have much HP. People can attack them very easily. Whereas in this, there aren't, there's obviously no one to attack them. Now, I obviously do have some extra mods here, like blast for example, which are going to be very, very useful for um, setting up our, our vault, if you want to look at it like that. What do I want to get? Jesus. Ah. Uh, water filtration is obviously going to be very, very important. Because that will treat the water and remove the, um, remove the nuclear fallout from it. But we might also want to go for those hydroponics very, very early on. So solar panels, definitely. Solar panels, then some batteries. We can survive a little bit without batteries, but we need to ensure that... Oh. We'd have to build a windmill and a solar panel to do that. So we will go for batteries as well. Um, what the hell are batteries on this, then? Uh... Batteries, they're there. Okay, we'll go for that one. Um, shit. Solar panels. Yep, put those boys on. Then we want to go for hydroponics, I think, immediately, so we can actually grow some damn food. Uh, luckily, this research is fairly cheap. 400, 600, 700. After that, I'd say then we need to start buffing up our research. We go for microelectronics, which will allow us to get the multi-analyzer. And that's basically as far as we can go with that. Nuclear power would be very, very good. It's sustainable. It's more or less... No downside to it. Now, I believe they can go into meltdown. Obviously, you need to fuel it with uranium. But uranium, with, with deep drilling, we can get as much as we like. So, oh, God, this is going to be very difficult. Shit. What if there are any implants that make you more, um, or less susceptible to fallout, like nuclear radiation? I'm not sure. Power armor, obviously, would be very, very essential as well. That's 6,000 research. That's very, very endgame stuff. Okay, fair enough. We'll go with that for now. Where the hell am I? I'm in a mountain. We'll go for that for now. We'll get this colony starting and see how we go. Do we want to change anything else before we carry on? Okay, plant cut maximum. Oh, no, that's not relevant. There are no damn plants. Okay, that's not relevant. That's not relevant. Mining is, is obviously in a good place there. Um, drugs, fabrication, machining. None of this is important either. Let's just go ahead and remove those quickly. Stone cutting actually will be because that's the only way we can build anything. For now, though, what we'll do is just dismantle pre-existing structures so that we can... Um, you know, actually work on the base level. We've got, we've got, like, concrete there. We've got, uh, concrete there. A little bit of marble. A little bit of slate. And a little bit more marble. Okay, fair enough. We should be able to build some walls out of that. So we'll set that to be their priority. Now, we also need to restrict them to stay inside the mountain. Otherwise, they'll keep going outside and get themselves killed. Now, what we could do... We could build a structure over this so they're protected from the fallout while they're fishing. That would be a very, very good idea. And ideally, we want to also build somewhere close to this geothermal generator because that's going to give us power. I might even start digging into it from here, say. Like, dig down into the mountain from, from this area so that we're automatically coming out onto here so they can fish quickly. We're near the generator, but we're also quite still well defended. We could brick up this bit, then they can only attack us from down here after crossover, you know, the river, that type of thing. So this is a kind of a defensible point as well. Okay. That's the plan. 
Right, team. Uh, the jobs are set up in that case. If anybody can, so we'll do that one. Don't worry about this too much for now. Um, deliver is fine. Haul is fine. Clean is fine, but probably irrelevant because the robot would do that. So I'm actually going to remove that. Uh, research, we will set to tier 1. That's going to be Aorang's main priority. Scanning is uh, with a mineral range scanner, which we won't have for ages yet, so we won't worry about that either. Very sparse job list. They might not actually need to work for 8 hours a day unless we build multiple fishing spots and just have that on the very, very back burner instead of being priority. Okay, so instead of having no eyed Fred do that, then we'll just set fishing to be low priority. What else is Philco Rhino going to do during his downtime? I said L Rhino then, didn't I? What, when he's not researching, but if he's always got research to do, then there's no going to be no real downtime for him. Okay, team. Um, what we want to do, dig into this mountain a little bit. Not a huge amount, because we don't want to waste too much time here. Um, hollow out sort of some rooms. We want to make them an odd number so we can actually build decent corridors here. So we'll sort of do this style for a while. Um, let's get three bedrooms set up. So we go one, two, three. I feel like that's not a bad plan. And then uh, we'll... Oh, shit, what's that? Five? That's getting kind of close to the mountain edge there. We don't want people digging through it. So make the room seven by seven. Yeah, that's pretty good. And then... Um, so that's five blocks. So one here as well. Seven by seven. There we go. So that's going to be a bedroom each and sort of a main lobby there for eating, that type of thing. Now we need uh, this one here to be connected up to some sort of fridge. So that we can vent it into this corridor and out of the mountain itself. So this can be our... And I'm going to keep them this sort of modular design as well. We'll do that one like that. So that that can be our fridge. We'll vent that one straight into the corridor and straight outside. Um, yeah, that's fine. That's okay. This can be just sort of an entrance area. So we won't worry about filling this with anything. This is just where guests can stand. Things like that. The actual main you know, bulk of the base can be over here. Um, we could also... Actually, you know what? I'm changing tactic a little bit. Um, oh, there's still this. We don't really want to build into this area. Um, what I'm going to do is something a little bit different. Okay, this this is instead going to be the bedroom hub. Again, bear with me. This is going to look a little strange. Uh, so we'll do 7x7 seven seven starting from here. This is going to be the bedroom hub. Um, and instead, we're just going to have the rooms parallel to one another, running all the way up to here instead. So we go 7x7. Seven seven. We could potentially have the walls buffered up against one another, couldn't we? So 7x7 seven seven and 7x7. Seven seven, just so we're not completely poking out of the mountain. So, okay, that's going to go there. We've got 7x7. Seven seven. So the middle of this room is going to be like, what, here? I think. And then we're also going to have 7x7. Seven seven, so the middle of that room is going to be this one here, I think, as well. Right, cancel that. The only reason for that is otherwise we're breaking ourselves in. So these are the bedrooms. This can be the sort of living area. This can be, I don't know, a kitchen. Uh, it seems a little distant from the freezer though, but that's just so we can vent it out. Because living in a mountain, you have to worry about heat management. Um, the only other thing is to build it venting right outside, but that also makes the base susceptible. This one to fill with turrets, sandbags, that type of thing. And I'll, we can always expand this room out. Um, and then this one could be like the research room and the living area. Things like that. Things, things to that effect anyway. Oh, you know what we could do actually? We could change tech a little bit. Have this as the freezer. This is the sort of um, dining area, kitchen area. And again, we can expand this. This can be the research area, but we can also expand that out as a sort of hub room later on. Okay, that's the generic base layout. Let's prioritize bedrooms. So we'll cancel the corridors to those first. Yeah. Yeah, that's not a bad idea. Okay. Team. Uh, your mission, if you choose to accept it, is firstly allow everything on the map so we can actually pick up these resources that drop with us. And let's land. Now, I do have a Speed 4 mod, but I'm not going to be playing on Speed 4 for the most part just because it's too fast. Um, let's unforbid everything. Who's our best shot then? Grundle is, isn't he? Because he's obviously very good at shooting flames. You get the bolt action rifle. You get the flak vest and you get the flak pants too. Hang on. No, no, no. Get the flak vest. Now, I have to manage time very carefully in this one because the zombies will appear and devour us, which is not ideal. Phil Rhino, get this gun. Um, so we've started work there. No, Fred is immediately on it. And when he's finished digging this out, these boys can help join in with the mining as well there. Sweet. Okay. Let's make this the storage room temporarily. Oh, in fact, we can have this as a storage room. We can have it vent through the storage room because who cares what temperature the storage room is, especially if we just leave the doors open as well. Uh, just make it a little susceptible. Now, ideally, as we're digging out the mountain, we'll find just like an area that doesn't have, um, that isn't roofed over by the mountain. There isn't a cave. It actually has like a natural opening, which we could vent into instead. We might even find that this area is very, very open the more we dig too. 
All right, there we go. So we've got ourselves a little storage room there. Let's start work on this sort of hub area. We do want to build in a front door very, very briefly just to give us some form of defense. So let's just do that. What we'll do instead of replacing these walls, we'll just smooth them off, which is a new feature added in RimWorld. Just allows you to smooth them off and, and act as regular, nice looking walls. Not as good as actually building, obviously, marble brick walls, but it is sort of that midpoint. We'll also save our resource. It just takes up time instead. So what have we got? Oh, shit. We've got like gates and stuff. Uh, we got doors, like, one by three doors. That's cool. I like that. Um, we won't worry about that too much for now. So let's go for, instead, what are we going to need urgently? Well, we need power urgently. So let's get a windmill, sort of, um... Oh, we can actually put one there. That's probably not a bad plan. It's also very, very close to the base. We'll put that there. If we're going to build that windmill there, what we want to do then is, uh, go ahead and get rid of these bits. We also probably want to dismantle this entire building just so we can use the bricks from it for other stuff like making floors. Um, and we'll go ahead and remove that floor manually as well. Do you boys want to go ahead and do that rather than mining? No, I'd Fred. Uh, I'm going to get you on the construction of that windmill before we do anything else. There we go. Okay. Once we got power, we can actually start, you know, cooling this cave if necessary. What I actually want to do is uh, block by roof. Oh, shit. Really? Zone? Remove roof areas. Sort of here. Now, obviously, Filco Rhino is... Oh, shit. He's assigned a weapon. He doesn't like weapons. Really? You can't have a weapon? Oh, shit. What's causing that? Um, let's go bio. Hated... What the fuck is preventing him from having violence? Shaman of Shadows hunting, fishing... Finishing off. Oh, God. Okay. Right, that's a little bit annoying. So he can't have a gun. He's not going to be leaving much anyway because obviously he's, um, you know, he's just in the house. What we want to happen then, we want you to go ahead and remove this roof briefly so we can at least get some power. What are you doing now? Digging a compacted machinery. Just just give up and sleep. Um, he's sleeping outside, which is obviously very, very dangerous. So what we need to do very quickly before anything else happens at all. Let's set them sleeping areas. Um, you go sleeping spot, sleeping spot, sleeping spot. And then you boys can wake up and actually go to that. What the fuck is he doing? Grundle? Don't wash yourself in the infected water, you fool. Um, toxic build-up initial. Shit. Okay, well, that should disappear as long as we are out of it. Over time, that would just uh, stop being manifested inside of him. Now, what we want to do is actually set up this cleaner and the hauler as well. Not a great use of initial resources, especially for the cleaner there. But the hauler in particular will be able to go out and pick up the fish or whatever we manage to get from this river. Or any resources that fall from space. And bring it back to the base without risking a colonist going out in the toxic fallout. So that seems like a pretty good idea to me. Um, let's unforbid that gun. Damn it. I can't believe that Filco Rhino can't defend himself. That's a little bit annoying. Okay, what we want to do then. We want to actually set Filco Rhino to... Uh, actually, we want to set the schedules full stop. Let's go recreation. Three hours of recreation day is pretty good. Um, how much sleep are they getting there? They're getting eight hours. That's good. We may want to restrict them. But as we're in the early game, there's nothing for them to actually do out there... And they don't really have much toxic buildup anyway, so we don't really need to worry about them going outside too much because it's not that damaging to start off with. Now, Filka Rhino is the night owl, so we actually need to flip his schedule so that he's working throughout most of the day, uh, throughout most of the night there, and then sleeping during the day. So we'll set him to sleep between, say, uh, 9 and 5. That's too much. A little bit too much. Um, so 5 o'clock he can wake up. So that is 4 hours of sleep. We'll give him three hours of recreation there just when it's morning. Because if he's, you know, in inside enjoying himself during the morning, I don't think that matters too much. Right, we're good. For Grinan's awake, and he's off to work. Can I actually get you to start dismantling this instead? So we're playing on speedboard now. I've got everything set up just because I'm very impatient. All right. Um, no, I'd Fred. You, you, actually, I would prefer if you could do this instead, my friend. Um, I could manually adjust this, but honestly, this is fine. grundle has got a tantrum. He's going to destroy 30 medicine. Did he actually just do that? You just destroyed all of our medicine. Body purist disgusted. Two artificial parts are sullying my natural pure body. What? Oh, shit. So he... Oh, god damn it. I didn't realize that would actually... Okay, so I thought body purist referred to implants, which would make sense. But actually, it's because he has beckles. I might need to edit that between episodes. Otherwise, he's going to be constantly... Breaking down over the fact that he's a dragon, even though he's a dragon. Oh, shit. We've got raiders. Oh, no, wait. What is that thing? That's not a raider at all. Oh, so I've also got the mod called Rim Arsenal, which is... um That adds a bunch of tech, like Fallout. Similar to Fallout tech, but not quite. 
This is clearly a creature from that. You are horrible. Um. Huh. Okay. Well, let's not worry about that too much. So the windmill's actually going. Blocked by roof still. Where's the fucking roof then? Um. Oh, we've got this bit. Right. No, I'd Fred. I need you to just finish off that bit as well so this can work out. Hey, don't smash my windmill, you prick. Attack. Um. Get yourself a gun, seeing as apparently you don't have one. Grundle, get out here and kill him dead. Uh. He's making some weird noises. I don't like that. Hey, why are you running away? Come back. Come back. Right, let's put this dude down. Kill him dead. You don't have to you don't have to run and gun. Just shoot him. Is he a man? What are you? I mean he's age 101, so I'm gonna assume not. Oh shit. Okay, that's good. Um finish him off. Kill him dead. Well that's a great start. Um we're already being attacked by horrible, horrible demons. Excellent. So not only now have we got toxic fallout, we've also got a heat wave as well. Um, and we're living in a cave, which is generally cooler, isn't it? Yeah, they are a little bit cooler. 26 degrees. We don't really want to go much above 30. I might have to build coolers just in the outside of the base here. That's so annoying. Well, there goes our power to start off with. Okay then, team. Uh, let's get this windmill hooked up to anything. Let's just at least get a power cable into the base, I suppose. Um, that's the best way to do that. Nice, okay, the cleaner is active, just what I'd like to see, let's reinstall this over here so we don't have to stretch the cable so far. Right, hauler is, let's just activate all. Active, let's just act activate, okay, the activate all button doesn't work, there we go, nice. So the hauling bot is going to go and uh, haul things for us, funnily enough, but that's all it can do. You know, it doesn't do anything else, it just picks up resources out there in the world and brings it back. So put it on speed 3 instead, speed 4 is a little bit too fast. There we go, uh, what are you doing outside? Gathering package survival meal. Just leave the bot to that. I might have to restrict them inside now because we got sort of getting to the stage where the build-up is going to start affecting them pretty quickly. This is a good start. So this was more or less the introduction to the series. Let me know what you think of the idea. And if, of course, if you have any mods that would complement it well, let me know. And I'll, if they're up to date, obviously add them to the series. This is going to be a weird one. It's going to be really interesting. I've never really played Rimworld like this before, so it's going to take me a while to adjust to things. Next episode, we've got to worry about food and water pretty quickly because how many meals we've we got? Like 45 between three people. That'll last us about five days. <laughs> it's not going to last as long. Um, the water's also going to be a big issue because it's going to be infected with all the, the toxics. The, the toxics? Wow. With all the nuclear fallout, things like that. So, um... Leave it there. This is going to be weird. Thank you for watching. Shout out to Big Dick Timmy, Sean Thornton, Zachary Harris, Harik Lucas Holting, Haydog, Croesus, Gabriel Vandos, Josh Lindine Tesla, Michael Mullen, Logan Tong, Spidey, James Ogilvy, Escape, and Jackson Whitman for their support at the ridiculous level of the Patreon tiers. And shout out to the more regular, normal individuals who are sensible. <laughs> Nathaniel Limbo, Brandon Mintoni, Necrofilm, Felix Dale, Princess Ugly the Dragon, Nick, Noblesse, Quet Lark, Lee, Zar Even, Facundo Vasquez, Paul Master, Imperator Augustus, Jack Allen, Chancellor Sheep Palpatine, I'm the Lizard King, Luan and Thomas, Yoran de Vries, Euphrates, Duncan, Tumasem, Jordan Campbell, Astro, and Sidini. Thank you for your support. Let me know what you think.